This is a dream interpretation class, part one. I am so excited about this class. In this class, this is actually the class that you were waiting for. You were really waiting for this class. The class is here now. And I want you to take notes because this class is going to be a dream interpretation in steroids. So you get ready to write things down because you want to keep an eye and an ear on everything that will be said. Even if it sounds simple, know that it is practical because the things of the spirit are simple. They are not complicated. So sometimes we complicate them, but I want you to keep in mind that God makes things simple for us. So in this class, you will learn how to interpret your dreams. Yes, in one class, you are able to start interpreting your own dreams. And uh, so you, can, you will learn how to interpret your dreams so you can increase your ability to hear God's voice while you sleep and uh, you can pray those prophetic strategies over your life and your family, your realms of influence, and your nation, our nation. So the reality is dream interpretation should be normal in the life of every believer. And say in your heart, that is me. <laughs> that is me. So you have all the potential for dream interpretation because Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. Matthew chapter 13 verse 11 says, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So in this class, you will learn about the requirements for dream interpretation, dream sources, the purpose of God, through dreams, because God is a purposeful God. If he gives you something, or if he gives you a dream, he has a purpose. Amen? So also you will learn how to interpret your dreams and dream interpretation as a tool of evangelism. I love that. I love going out on the streets and do dream interpretation on people that I don't know and they don't know me. Because God becomes real to them and it's encouraging to me that God is speaking through me accurately. So after this class, we will, we will, God willing, we will engage in a practical session of dream interpretation. Uh, it was assigned to you ahead of time to bring a short, short, short dream. <laughs> so that you can bring it up later so that we can practice on interpreting those dreams. I hope that we can go through all of them, but if not, I have a, a plan B for that, okay? One of the ways that God speaks, now I want you to take notes. I want you to be very uh, focused on everything that I'm saying because I will try to go fast. And so here we go. One of the ways that God speaks is through dreams. Dreams are part of the promises of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 21 is the fulfillment of Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 28 says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, even the unsaved, right? So your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. So dreams, dreams are part of the, the last days outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that already happened on the day of, on, on, on the book of Acts. So we are that generation that has the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us. So the fruit of that should be dreams, prophetic words through dreams. Now, what is a dream? Dreams are supernatural. Dreams are spiritual interactions that enclose messages for the dreamer. Messages, the messages of God are transmitted to our spirits through our spiritual senses, our spirit, our spirit being, not only our spiritual senses, but our spiritual beings. Because even through dreams, the Lord, ha the Lord allows us sometimes to be transported even, even through dreams. 
So when you are transported, you, your eyes are not the only ones that are being transported. It's your Holy Spirit that is being transported. So then, what is a dream again? The dreams, how are they communicated? How are they, the, the dreams are communicated and received in our spirit, and they are also communicated and received in our natural mind. Goes through our spirit, then to our soul, which is our mind. Okay? Now, dreams from God are prophetic words. They can be literal, meaning that exactly what you saw is going to happen. And it can be, dreams can be symbolic and very symbolic or simply a low level symbology, symbolic of symbolism. And that means that you have to break it down and receive the revelation the interpretation of that dream. Dreams are supernatural. Therefore, you will see symbols and actions manifesting in unusual ways. I'm going to repeat that again, that you will see symbols and actions manifesting in unusual ways. What do I mean about that? Let me give you an illustration. You might see a person flying. You might be flying in a dream. A, you might see a person running faster than a vehicle, a person riding uh, on the top of an eagle, or breathing underwater. You might have a dream where you're breathing underwater, or may go, maybe going inside of a book and going into a different dimension. Uh, the fire uh, might be coming out of the mouth of somebody. And so many different things that we are not normally seeing in the natural realm. Touch your skin for a moment. Just touch your arm. Just touch. That's natural. Your body is natural. And what I just described to you about going inside of a book or fire coming out of your mouth is a spirit. So that's why it's so different. Now, I want, to, I want you to pay attention to this. Look. Watch this, your mind is so used to the natural realm and, and is so familiar, is so familiar with the natural realm that when something outside the natural realm, the physical realm or familiarity uh, or something familiarity happens, people becomes fearful and in doubt. They are unsettled. You know how many people they know uh, what they are going to do Monday, what they are going to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, pancakes on Saturday, every weekend. <laughs> and that's called a routine. And there is nothing wrong with planning, but people panic when, when, uh, when, uh, when oh, we are not doing pancakes on Saturday. What happened? Why are you doing pancakes on Wednesday evening for dinner? What's wrong with you? <laughs> So it's, you got to get your mind out of being so familiar and getting used to know that God will speak suddenly and he will give you revelation suddenly. He will cause you to come into a place where you break from those familiarity things, those familiar things. So, so that we stay away from being fearful and in doubt because see familiarity makes people feel secure familiarity makes people feel safe so when God speaks to you you no longer feel like oh, oh my god where, where did that came from you know so you start feeling fearful but you shouldn't feel fearful when you hear the voice of God because you will learn to recognize his voice and um, so okay so people become sometimes fearful and in doubt when something is happening outside of their natural and, um, and familiar realm so it is why people say uh, things like, okay, that dream was crazy. That dream I had last night was crazy. I was riding a, a, a flying horse and, and fire was coming out of the mouth of that horse. And, uh, you know, that was weird. And then I was in China. <laughs> so people start thinking that the dreams are weird because it's something that is spiritual, it's not natural. It's why Jesus always was trying to speak to the people in parables, is speaking to them with natural things, farming language, so that they find something in common so that they can understand. 
because he was speaking spiritual things to them, but they couldn't understand. Why they couldn't understand? Why they couldn't understand? Listen to this. The people during the time of Jesus Christ, they still didn't have the Holy Spirit. They did not have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit in the inside of you. So you have access to all revelation, understanding, wisdom, illumination, light. You have access to the kingdom of heaven. The doors of heaven are open. The gates of heaven are open for you. The mysteries of the kingdom belong to you. So this is very important. This is very important to understand. So I want to say one more thing, that this is very important to understand that we have to let go of familiarity for both to understand dreams and to interpret dreams. Being too familiar with symbols, it can be a hindrance sometimes because if you rely on how familiar you are with the knowledge and significance of a symbol, you will go with what your brain says rather than what Holy Spirit is saying. I'm not against books of symbols, but I'm saying we must rely on the Holy Spirit. Listen, Daniel in the Bible and Joseph, they didn't have a book of symbols. They rely on the spirit that was upon them. Notice it was upon them. It was not inside of them. It was upon them because Holy Spirit was not given to them yet at that time. Okay, so now talking about how important it is not to rely on the knowledge that you have in your brain regarding a symbol, I want to give you an illustration. For instance, if you read on a book of symbols that a vehicle means a ministry, or you hear a minister of the gospel say that a vehicle means a ministry, and then you have dreams about vehicles, and, and, and you always use it that way, that is meaning that is a ministry and you don't ask the Holy Spirit for the meaning of it, you are falling into error. You're getting the wrong interpretation. You cannot rely on that, okay? And also, if when I go to the streets and do dream interpretation, I'm not holding the book of uh, symbols on my hand. Hold on, ma'am, let me look in here and see what teeth means. <laughs> Let me see what blue signifies. No, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. I want you to be fully equipped. And how are you going to be fully equipped? By acknowledging the Holy Spirit. He knows all things and he is inside of you. Amen. So an example of symbolism. Okay, I'm, am I going to fast for you guys? Wave at me if I'm going to fast. Okay, okay. Now, I want to share with you an example of symbolism because dreams have a lot of symbols. And uh, dreams also have types, symbols, and shadows. So I'm going to hopefully do another class about symbols, types, and shadows. Types is, for instance, let's say Moses is a type of Jesus Christ because Moses was a deliverer. Okay, so that's a type, but I will do another class another time because that can be a very long topic, uh, symbols, types, and shadows. So I want to talk to you about a symbol just to give you an illustration because this will help you to move to the next in your dream interpretation. We see in the scriptures scrolls, and a scroll, let's say a scroll is a symbol. So in this time and age, a scroll will be a book. Okay, and now in this time and age, a book will be electronic. It will be an ebook. Now, I want you to learn, pay attention to this because this is so key. This is something Holy Spirit taught me directly. He didn't teach it to me through anybody else. Holy Spirit taught me this and is look into the functionalities of that symbol. And with the leading of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will highlight to you what's the a uh, part of that functionality of that symbol that God wants you to apply into that dream. I'm going to give you an illustration. Going back to the symbol of the book, what are books function for? How are they used? How are books used? Well, what do they represent? Books represent knowledge, wisdom, revelation, and books can represent a person. Have you seen how people, they write a book about their lives? 
or testimonies. That's a person. So a book can represent a person because they write their life story. So it can represent a writer. It can represent a time to relax. It just depends on the context of the dream. It can represent someone intellectual. It can represent understanding because many times books are um, giving you understanding about a certain topic. So it can uh, speak symbolically of understanding. A book we see on the scripture, then a book uh, signifies the word of God. And the word of God, the word is Jesus. So a book can be Jesus in a dream. So how are books used here? They, they can be also training manuals. They can be uh, a guide how to do something. So it's representing those things. But what is Holy Spirit highlighting to you? So it is important that you identify what is Holy Spirit highlighting to you regarding that particular symbol. You're not going to look at all the symbols in the dream. No, you're going to focus on the ones that are mentioned the most, the more important symbols that God shows you in the dream. Because otherwise you will go crazy breaking down every single thing on the dream. So God used symbols to represent people or something that he's trying to convey. I want to give you an example of symbolism representing something. And also this one can be symbolism and type, I would say. So let's say, okay, let's say that you had a dream and you see that there is an ant, you know, a little ant, a little ant, working hard and walking and walking and carrying things on her back. And this, this ant goes up and down the, the ant hill. She delivers what she was carrying and she is now going back to work. On her way, she sees another ant struggling, carrying a heavy, large leaf, which must go to the ant hill as well. So she immediately starts helping the other ant to carry the heavy leaf all the way to the ant hill. After she finishes helping, she leaves the ant hill and continues with her journey. If that was a dream, we can say that God can use the ant to represent you, that you are busy as an ant, <laughs> that you are busy as an ant and what what, what is he saying in the dream? And this is just short without going too much in depth is um, that what is God saying in the dream? That you care for others, that you help others regardless of how busy you are, uh, that you remove burdens from others. If you see it, where is this dream in the Bible? Where is this dream in the Bible? We see that it speaks of removing burdens from people. And uh, it, it shows, this dream shows that you are focused and that you are compassionate with others, that you are a team player, and that you help others in their journey. And it looks like you're going on the right direction. That's what God is saying. Now, Holy Spirit keeps reminding me of this, okay? This, this, this example that I just gave you is actually, it was not a dream, but it could be a dream. But you know, this Holy Spirit gave it to me in the natural about 10 years ago i went outside and i was looking on the ground and i saw some little ants and i said lord show me something you know speak to me and he showed me this i saw literally two little ants helping each other helping one ant helping the other one and it became a parable to me and so Dreams are also parables. It's why I gave you this example. I really believe that God is causing me, and I'm prophesying now that God is causing me to share to you where this story of the ant or the parable of the ant came from, because he wants you to know that he speaks when you're sleeping and when you're awake, and that he can speak through natural things as well. Amen? He can give you parables even throughout the day and at night. In Jesus' name. I feel the anointing on that. So I release the anointing right now on you in Jesus' name. Now, did you see how that end could be you in the dream? It could definitely be you. Now, the mysteries belong to us. Amen? 
The mysteries belong to you, to you. Mark chapter 4, verse 10 through 14. The Bible says that Jesus was saying to them that to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God. I want you to know that you are different, that you are different. You are different. You have the Holy Spirit in the inside of you. So because of that, you have access to that revelation and you have the access to understand all dreams and mysteries, all visions, dreams and mysteries. So Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. He is the spirit of revelation. He is the spirit of understanding. He is the spirit of wisdom. Therefore, it's not so much about having a skill for dream interpretation. Any new believer, that's the requirement. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, bam, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can do dream interpretation because the Holy Spirit is in the inside of you. You have access to revelation, understanding, and wisdom. Okay, so it's not about a skill. I know that other people in the past, they have thought and emphasized about the people hey, that dream interpretation is a skill. I respect those leaders and I appreciate their teachings, but I, I personally do not believe that uh, the dream interpretation is about having a skill. Because why? If you look in the dictionary, you look, what is a skill? According to the Miriam Webster dictionary, a skill is, watch this, the ability to use one's knowledge effectively and readily in execution or performance. The second concept is dexterity or coordination, especially in the execution of learned physical tasks. So you want supernatural revelation and understanding and wisdom. They, they, they are all inside of you because of Holy Spirit dwells in you. Therefore, your dependence is on Holy Spirit and to seek him for help, not from your brain. Does that make any sense? It's not about performance. It's not about, about your skill to interpret dreams. It's about revelation, the wisdom, wisdom of God, revelation of God. Are you telling me that, um, I, I was, I was give you an illustration, but it escapes me. So I think it didn't meant for me to share it. So I keep moving. I want to break down for you that you want supernatural revelation. You want supernatural understanding and you want supernatural wisdom. And guess what? I have good news. They are inside of you. So you can just ask Holy Spirit, open me up to revelation, wisdom, and understanding. And he will give it to you. It's there. Holy Spirit was giving me an illustration this morning. I want you to share with my people, he says, this illustration. When you have been very busy throughout the day, and uh, you're so, so busy, your mind is really busy, you can be driving and you can be uh, actually maybe in the mountains and beautiful mountains with beautiful views, but because it's your mind is so focused on everything that you have to do, you're not aware of how beautiful your surrounding areas are. It's the same way with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is inside of us. But if we are not acknowledging and being aware the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom, understanding, and revelation, we are not accessing him. I hope that makes sense. Okay, I want to break down in three simple ways, revelation, understanding, and wisdom. Revelation is supernatural insight. is the interpretation of the dream. Meaning that um, the meaning that you need about the dream, that's revelation. Something that was uncovered, something that you couldn't see before now is revealed. Understanding, understanding. Okay, Holy Spirit helps you understand in your heart. These scriptures help us to understand. Understanding opens your eyes to see and your ears to hear what is communicating to you, what the Holy Spirit is communicating to you. Wisdom. Why do we need wisdom for dream interpretation? Wisdom, supernatural wisdom, is about the application of the dream. How are we going to apply the dream comes from wisdom, the wisdom of God. Remember Joseph, when he gave the interpretation of the dream, he, the king asked him, what can I do? What should we do? And Joseph gave wisdom regarding the situation, that they needed to store food 
for how long and how to do it. And so he was appointed to that position. So wisdom is about the application of the dream. So basically, what to do with the dream? Where do, the, where do dreams come from? They come from three sources, the Holy Spirit, the demonic realm, and the natural soul of man. Now, the Holy Spirit will never release confusion uh, in, a, in, a, in a dream. He will never release confusion or like fear or terror, a dark terror. No, that's not from God. Now, the sources from the demonic realm will be probably confusion and fear and everything that is demonic, evil, dark. The natural soul of man can be affected by the things that the person has been thinking about throughout the day, if they have been thinking negative things, or if they are taking a type of drugs, if they are taking a, a drug, legal or, or illegal, <laughs> they can cause dreams. And so you have to watch for that. Easy, an easy way to identify if the dream is from God or the enemy, I'm gonna give you a simple one. Very, very simple. John chapter 10, 10. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God has come, Jesus Christ has come to give abundant life. So he gives hopes and he gives answers. God always gives answers and dreams. He never leaves you hanging, hanging there. Okay, so, so remember that, John 10, 10. So if the dream is stealing, killing, and destroying, obviously that's a plan of the enemy. But the plan of God, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, is for the plans that I have for you are good, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. Notice that in this class, I'm not trying to convince you that God speaks through dreams. This audience here knows that God speaks through dreams. And if not, you dream. You have dreams. Amen? You know the dreams exist. Okay, value your dreams. If you don't value your dreams, you reject God's messages. And um, then later, if we reject me the messages of God, we become dull and dreams become less frequent. I want to finish this uh, session one now. And uh, I will see you again on the session number